Look at that, absolutely lovely. I'm catching one of them, some a bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller, every cast in. I just want to talk you through how I'm doing it. Well, there we are. I'm catching a roach or rud, mainly rud, every cast in. And that is a small one. I'll just unlook this fish, little rud. We're fishing today at Rookery Waters on Rook Lake. It's a, a big round lake, absolutely full of carp, up to close to 30 pounds. But this session that we're filming today, I just want to show you my approach that is such an enjoyable way of fishing. I'm fishing a waggler. We've probably got 12 foot of water out there and I'm fishing at the moment probably three foot deep. And I just want to show you a few tips on how to have a lovely day's fishing, fishing the waggler, the poly way, catching roach and rud up in the water. Look at that, just about swingable. Absolutely awesome fishing. The beauty of this style, how I'm fishing, is that I'm not chucking very far, so I'm making it easy for myself. I'll feed some casters out there to show you, because I've got the fish boiling now. That's probably 20 metres maximum. But the beauty of this way of fishing that I'm going to talk you through on this session is I could do this anywhere around this lake, around Rook, any peg. Although it's full of carp, and if it was a carp match, it'd be entirely different because there'd be certain areas you'd want to be for the carp, maybe up the top end or maybe in front of the chalets over there, where more carp tend to hang about. But with this silfish fishing for roach, you might get a skimmer, roach, rud and perch, up in the water, on caster, on a waggler, fishing the, the top part of the lake, it's 12 foot deep out there, I'm probably fishing three foot maximum. It is a lovely way to fish, because it's all action. You may hook an odd carp, but I can sit any peg round here and do this. And the same on most commercials, because people are always fishing for carp. Silverfish seem to get ignored, only come winter time maybe. But a day here in the summer, I could sit anywhere around this lake and do what I'm doing today. Loose feeding caster, fishing a little waggler, keeping it simple. Look at that, look at the fish boiling out there. And you can do this up and down the country, any lake that's got a head of sealfish that people don't really fish for. This way of fishing is such a lovely way to have a day's sport. It's what I'd say is simply, simply lovely. Get 
Well, I just want to take you through uh, the rod, float, hooks, line, etc. that I'm using. Um, it is, it's such a simple way of fishing. It's a Ryzen Pro uh, Waggler, 13 foot one, four meters. It's probably a through action rod, like, like a medium waggler. Um, you want something that's not too stiff. You want something that's just slightly soft the top, that obviously when you pull into the fish fishing shallow, they kick, you know, getting fish up to eight ounces, you might get an odd pound fish. You want it just to take, soften that blow. And the rod then is very important for the hook length you're using. I'm using 010 power micron hook length. So it's a lightish hook length, some people might use 012, but using 010, I find you get a better balance of, you'll get more bites, and providing you don't strike too heavy-handed, and the rod's capable of taking the shock out of the strike, if you do give too hard a strike, the hook length should be okay. You're not gonna snap your hook length. But if you, if you fished 08, there's chances you could easily bump a fish. And when you come to swing them in, if some fish are swinging and not netting, you can swing in a slightly larger fish. So it gives you the best of both worlds. It's not too light and it's not too strong. So it'll give you more bites and gives you a little bit of flexibility in swinging in fish. The hook I'm using is one of our new MXC-1. Now the MXB is the same uh, hook pattern, but obviously it's um, a barbed hook and it is a barbless rule on here. So the hook I'm using is the MXC-1, a size 16. And with that size, I can fish a single maggot if I want to, single caster like I will be fishing, or I can put two casters on there. Not as real strong hook, but not too fine a hook. So it gives, you've got the best balance. Unlike if you was on a pole, you could get away with a, a lighter hook. But being on a waggler rod, a little bit more abrupt on the fish. So just a slightly stronger hook, really. But that's ideal, beautiful hook. And if I look at my setup on here, I'm. Fishing now, probably three foot deep. I've got one, two, three, four, five, number 10 stots just spread evenly between my hook and my float. And the first one's probably six inches from my hook. And the actual hook length is probably eight inches. So I've got one number 10 stot on the hook length. I've got one of my little plastic slims a lovely little float. They're weighted, so I need a, a little bit of shot on the line. The actual size I'm using is a one plus one gram. So the range I have, they're all plus one gram, apart from one of the small ones, which is plus half a gram, because it's a very short float. Um, and that way, the same bulk I can put around the float, and I can, if I'm using an adapter, I can take any float off and put any of the one of the floats in the range on. And that way, if I've got it shotted down to there, Whatever one I put on, because I've got a gram on the line, it will be shotted down to there. I've got a nice fine insert tip there, that's why it's called a slim, and that gives me a better bite indication, obviously of a thicker tip. I can dot it down, cast out, I know I'm just reading the few shot, uh, stots that are going to fall through the walls that short bit, but fishing that depth, you cast in, by the time you're fed, the float's gone and you're picked up and you're in. But it's just something finer, rather than a big thick top, just to see the bite indication. The other thing what I've done with this safe shot, now I've put onto my line little tiny silicon sleeves that you use for your pole floats, and then I put that inside the shot and that doesn't harm the line. Because before I've been fishing, before I started to use silicon uh, to go on the inside of the, the shots where it's very damaging to the line, I've lifted up after catching a lot of fish and everything's just come loose where the shot has cut through the line. So by putting pieces of silicon on, you can then just set them inside the shot, close it together, and it's actually pushing the silicon is biting your line in the shot. It's not the shot being abrasive on the line where it would cut through. When we used to use lead, you didn't have that problem. With safe shot, it's the best way to stop it from damaging the line. And that is the simple approach. Real line I've got on there is 016, which is our horizon real line which is, I think, about five pound. No, it's, it's four pound something. Um, so I could probably fish on that, although it's um, 016, I could probably fish maybe 018 if I wanted to, but I wouldn't. I'd fish up to 014 when I use it for chubbing, and I know that the hook length's gonna break before the main line. 
because it's a little bit more robust and it is a lovely line. You can put a sinker on it to make it sink or you can just keep it as a, a line that will float. A very uh, versatile line and it's a lovely colour to it. It's like a, an off grey, um, which I think is a nice colour to have. Um, and that's it, that's a simple set. Reels Horizon 3000. It's a big enough reel for casting distance, especially the distance you want to cover on the Waggler. I mean, I'm only chucking probably 20 metres, which that is ideal for, but that would cast a lot further. And that's the setup, very simple, very effective, and um, you'll see how many fish it can catch. Look at that, another lovely rug. This is absolutely awesome. It is one of them a bun. Beautiful fishing. Beautiful fishing. I'm feeding the same area every time, which is about 20 metres out. Sometimes I'm landing just past it and bringing it in if I miss a bite. And sometimes I'm casting to the right or to the left. Look straight away. Lovely fishing. You notice I didn't strike, then I just pull gently to the right, to the side. Look at that, absolutely lovely fishing. Lovely fishing. Just hooking the caster, just like a maggot. Because there's a lot of fish out there now, I'm feeding before I cast. Because I literally haven't got enough time to cast it and then feed. So I can keep just a gentle tight line. Fish on. It's a gentle movement just to the left with the rod. No need to strike it, you just wind them on really. A poly swap. Awesome fishing, awesome. It like a maggot. Feed before I go out there. Hit in the same spot. This time I land it right in the middle of the bait. I just stop it with my finger so the hook bait goes past the float. And she goes under, just pull to the to the right, and they're on. About swing these beautiful fish. Five, six ounce of bung. Especially how hot it is today, if it was a cut match, you might be better off catching these because they'd add up like one carp, two carp, depending on how many you caught. While the carp are not feeding. You see the poly swap then? I'll show you it. It's just where I, I'm cack handed. It feels natural to me. I've tried to fish left handed, tried to fish right handed, although I am right handed, but as you can see, I'm casting the handles on that side. I'm holding it in my left hand. Then the fish is on, and see I swap, then wind it in the correct way. And as the fish getting nearer, I know I'm about to swing it, I swap back, swing the fish in. So let's do that again. So I bait it up. I'm holding the rod in my left hand. So I'll feed, I'll cast with my left hand. Stop it. Then I'm over. Fish on, swap. And wind in. No time's lost, but right like there, I've swapped again. Maybe I'm doing it the right way. Maybe all you out there are doing it the wrong way. I'm just hooking the caster like the maggot. I have tried maggot, but it's awful. A little perch. It's unbelievable. All them fish out there think they take a maggot, they're swirling. But it's a caster they want. 
I'm feeding probably 20 casters each far out then you'd probably get through if you're doing sort of a five hour session you'd probably get through two and a half pint of caster you know the most important thing is regularly feeding them you know where I feed 10 or 30 as long as I'm regular feeding to keep them there feeding because once you've got the fish there feeding you just got to keep them there and just get in a rhythm Now that time I cast to the right of my feed. It's a smaller fish, but sometimes you get a bigger fish casting to the right or the left, as opposed to casting right in your bait. I think the bigger fish come in, grab the bait that's falling just through the water, and then shoot to the left, shoot to the right, shoot to the near side, shoot just past. Listen, it as soon as it goes in. What could be better? Awesome fishing. Absolutely awesome. I've changed my depth again. I've changed it probably two or three times. I started at about three and a half foot. I'm now probably fishing two and a half foot. I had four droppers, I've now got two number 10 stock droppers, that's all. Uh, still single caster. I've not changed my feeding routine, so I feed, then I cast out. But when you start a session, always start deeper, though it's, it's 12 foot deep out there. I started at probably four foot, but three foot with it being warm today is about the, the average depth you'll, you'll catch at, but it just seemed that I was waiting a couple of times when the float weighted up if I didn't catch a fish. So by just bringing the depth down slightly, my catch rate went up, but there'll be a depth that you'll bring it down and you'll just miss fish and you'll be catching nothing, you're missing too many. It's just a, a depth you'll get through the session, after about the first hour and a half, you'll find a depth that's comfortable to be catching the fish at. You can be too deep or you can be too shallow. And that's only something on the day you can work out and find out what the correct depth to be fishing. And the way I do it is I start off just a little bit deeper than normal. It's just finding that correct depth balance that you're catching and catching faster than if you was deeper. And then you can go too shallow where you're catching nowhere near the same. And that's something you'd have to work through on the session and find out what's What's the best depth? You know, each day can be different. That's why it's fishing and not catching. So I found that I started probably closer to four foot and I'm now probably two and a half, two and three quarters, and that's just about the right depth. Give it enough full and to catch as it weights up as well. So I'm just getting a bite every chuck in and you just get into a rhythm. Saying that you could be catching, I could be catching like this for two or three hours, really catching well, and then all of a sudden it slows down. So then you can go just a little bit deeper. And normally probably four inches at a time and just see if it makes any difference. It's lovely fishing though. Just keeping that rhythm of feeding, very important. It's quite easy, just hook my, put my caster on. Put 20 to 30 casters in the pouch, feed them out there. And cast out to your feed. Fish on, very lovely. Can't beat this. Especially here at Rookery Waters on this, this lake I'm fishing that's Rook. It's got great depth, although there's a lot of carp in here, you can still have some great sessions. Fishing how I'm fishing, putting silverfish in the net, every chuck. 
And today I've caught mostly rudd. I've had a few roach, but it's mostly been rudd. A few perch, but mostly rudd. Where the lake is, it's round with, with, rudd, uh, with roach as well. I think it's just where it's hotter, the rudder feeding more than the roach. It's lovely fishing, this is. What they call a typical polypeg. Well, it's the first carp I've hooked, which is just about to finish. Maybe catch one more rudd and I've hooked a carp. I thought we would hook a couple, but it's the first one I've hooked. It's a big fish, but I'm only on 010. He'll probably kite in and just do me in the reeds, but got a chance. Let's see if we can get it out. Oh, he's, he's just out. He's out. We won't have a chance. Never know. Oh no, I've got him away. Yeah, he's on the top there. Ghosty. Won't see him in a minute. There we are. Oh, ten summertime. Oh no, he's bigger than I thought. So lift him up, have a look. Right, big long fish. What a beauty. O oh, ten. Probably eight, nine pound. Well there we are, look. What a cracking bag of fish. I don't want to drop the landing net too low because they'll be jumping out. Probably fish four hours and that's a massive bag of fish. Absolutely one a bun. And you can do that on commercials up and down the country. Fishing how I've just taken you through it. Simple approach, cast of fishing. Lovely sport, simply, simply lovely.